This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I'll be speaking with the company No Password. I'm sitting down right now with Yasser Masudnia, who is CEO of the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I got a lot of great questions here from our tech team. So you ready to get started? Yes, I am. All right. First question. Can you tell us about the founding story of No Password? How did you guys get started? Sure. So my co-founder and I, we always, we are, I would say, we had our own share of the problem with the password. And the problem mm -hmm. has been always at the back of our head. And uh, when we wanted to start the company, we, we realized that today uh, and uh, hopefully in the future, we are looking at some really good advancement in technologies like our smartphones, uh, autonomous car, uh, a lot of artificial intelligence uh, products and, and robots. But we're still using a method that we used to use at the age of um, Roman Empire to mm -hmm. get to the uh, tent and to get to the cities. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're still using that method, old method, to, to access our data and information and laptops and computers everywhere that we work. And we think it's time, we, we thought that it's time to change that and use a better technology that it really works, it would be easy, mm. and also it would be safe and secure. And at the time, we had this good advancement on the uh, smartphones in terms of the security, in terms of, uh, of a lot of features like secure elements on the phone was introduced back then. And also the uh, good sensors for, uh, that can be used for biometrics like fingerprint mm -hmm. readers, great cameras and microphone. And we decided to leverage that to start no password and getting rid of users' passwords. Very nice. Okay. And what would be the elevator pitch for no password? So the elevator pitch uh, would be, we all have been there. We've been for struggling yep. with passwords. I think an, a normal user has something about 100, 250 passwords uh, for different accounts, or at least they have 100, 250 accounts that they need password for those accounts. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the problem from the enterprise or organizations, um, they have a bigger problem. Uh, if we look at the calls to the call center, we see in some organizations, 15 to 45% of the calls are run password resets because wow. the users forget their password. And those calls cost something about 7 to $25 each for the organization if they handle that call uh, in the, here in the United States. And I think we've, we've done, all done that, that we struggle, or we call it gymnastic on the, sm on the smallest screen, that mm -hmm. we wanted to enter a complex password on a more, let's say, banking application. And we've been there, and we have struggled with that. A lot of, it has a lot of costs for the organization and also security challenges. And we've seen, for instance, last year some report shows that over 85% of attacks are happening through stolen credential mm -hmm. or phishing, social engineering, key loggers that are targeting password, or as a result of uh, uh, basically the weak password that users or admins have for their account. Right. So we created a solution that allows uh, companies to use biometrics and behavioral authentication uh, to manage the user's access to anything that they want the users to have access to. And through that, they can manage their workforce or mm -hmm. customer's access. And for workforce, for instance, they can get rid of password for all of the resources that, to, that uh, organizations, call, basically uh, workforce, enter the password for. They really? can use no password so no and pa eliminate okay. the password for that. Wow. And so now I'm curious, how is your multi-factor authentication solution different from other authentication solutions out there? Conventional definition of the multi-factor authentication has been something you know, something you are, and something you have. Mm 
Oh. And when we look at something you have, in our case, it's your smartphone, something you are is obviously your biometric and your behavioral. Right. And when it comes to something you know that has been conventionally the password that you enter, and it's been losing its value because of the lots of vulnerabilities and weaknesses around attacks to the passwords, we are eliminating that something you know with the multi-factors that we extract behind the scene from the smartphone, including some information like cryptographic uh, challenges or um, tokens that we c create or some hardware information that we get from the phone. And we eliminate that part of something you know, okay. and we eliminate the need of user manually entering credentials with information that we extract behind the scene from the user's device uh, after the user gets biometrically authenticated. Another different, uh, the big differentiation mm -hmm. for our solution is that we, our solution doesn't have any uh, device or a platform dependency. Okay. So it can be used across a wide range of products that the users use. And whatever you use today for your work, uh, you can, uh, we can eliminate the password for that. It covers offline and off online modes. Wow. And we also thought about scenarios that the users lose their phone or mm -hmm. temporarily don't have access to their phone. So we cover all of those cases. And we allow the companies to have a peace of mind mm -hmm. that they, their access and their users' access to information is secure. And also users can simply access their information without a headache of managing all those passwords. That sounds nice. <laughs> really nice. And now you mentioned companies. What types of companies are adopting your solutions? What does your customer base mainly look like? So essentially we started with financial institutions okay. because we saw that it's a bigger pain uh, in the financial institution. After that, we started working with, with insurance, healthcare, and now we have customers from online vendors, tech companies, manufacturing, retails, a wide range of perspective. Uh, when we started it, we started with a, a couple of pilots with obviously large financial institution, mm -hmm. but now we have customers even from medium-sized organization uh, that they, they use no pass to address their uh, convenience and also the cost of the IT and managing the user's account. And it's a combination of security, convenience, and also privacy for the users. That brings up uh, a lot of different companies from medium size. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to say even the small companies we've seen, really? uh, they're showing interest to our product. But have our in its initial focus has been larger organizations. OK, got it. And now, based on your experience, how is the threat landscape changing or evolving in your opinion? If you look at how a lot of service providers uh, uh, work, mm -hmm. um, look at solution, look at um, let's say things that we use every day like Google or uh, Facebook, yep. they are all in the business, business of gathering the user's information and generating more and more and more information and storing those information yep. and that creates a valuable um, source of you know, basically obviously information and other things that um, creates a lot of threats around them and a lot of people try to break in and have access to your information and my information or others information mm -hmm. and that created a lot of new challenges imagine look at the equifax uh, yeah, oh my gosh recently. Huge. what kind of information have been compromised um, when it com when it comes to this type of information we see that for instance, from marketing solutions, there are some behavioral information. Where have you been, for instance, mm -hmm. in the past um, few days? All of those information are valuable information that creates a lot of threat around it. And now we try to address only the access part of that threat mm -hmm. and how we can manage to secure the user's access and make sure that it's you that you, uh, you want to access your information, mm -hmm. not someone else or an intruder. Yeah, and you made a really good point earlier. It seems like a majority of the attacks are phishing half the time in social engineering, so it's a lot of credential stealing. True. True. 
Okay, and I'm wondering, as attackers continue to develop new techniques, how does your team continue to advance? Well, it's the key to the kingdom. Mm. Uh, it's a gem of access, and you, if you intrude to someone's account through their credential and have your credentials, you can access all their information. Everything, and yeah. If, and if you can manage to um, compromise a, a privileged users, you will have access to organization information that and oftentimes it's more valuable than one individual. So that makes it a good target for, okay. for a lot of intruders and that's how we wanted to avoid uh, having the user entering those information or even storing it on a centralized mm -hmm. to eliminate this type of attacks. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm curious, how does AI play a role in your solution? AI play great roles. For instance, for our biometric authentication, it helps us to uh, prevent replay attack or um, biometric spoofing. Okay. And uh, we also use AI to create um, two, two, two additional types of authentication that one of them we call it uh, adaptive and contextual authentication. We, and the definition is that uh, we, when every time we want to access our account, mm -hmm. uh, we access it from certain places. There are certain environmental factors um, around us that, that stay unique to us mm -hmm. and our devices. And based on using those information, we can do what we call uh, adaptive and contextual authentication. For instance, if we're logging into our account um, here from San Francisco now, mm -hmm. uh, we shouldn't be able to log in to our account or either the same account or others mm -hmm. within three hours from New York because there is no that way for sense. us to yes, get there. Yes, that's a very good point. Three hours. Or the uh, same thing that oh. can happen uh, around the information that can be extracted from either our phone, tablet, laptop, mm -hmm. or computers. And uh, we can use that for adaptive and contextual authentication. There is also another type of authentication that we do. We call it behavioral and continuous authentication. Mm -hmm. And AI help us to look at how the users handle their devices, essentially, how you use your mouse and keyboard and how you use your phone. Okay. Are you left-handed, right-handed, how you hold your phone? Yeah. And all of those, based on processing of those information, we can, after you log into your account, we can continuously monitor the user's behavior. So if you left your phone on the uh, desk and walk away, let's say, go somewhere else and someone else pick up your phone and you are not, you're lo still logged into your account, we, n we wanted to realize realize that it's not you block the user's access wow. or at least require another biometric authentication. Just by seeing the difference in Just the movements exactly. and stuff. Wow, okay. That's really cool. And uh, I know that security compliance has become a major concern for organizations. How does your team help out with that? There are um, uh, in 2017 and we're going to see the same thing in 2018 and as we go uh, forward, we're going to have this uh, coming up in different organizations or different industries in mm -hmm. different uh, geolocations. For instance, we have NYDFS coming up, GDPR coming up, mm -hmm. and a lot of companies are uh, uh, thinking about how they need to address their challenges that they have around data protection, user privacy, and securing their uh, employees or customers access to this information. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the access, when it comes to the requiring a stronger authentication, when it comes to the point that you want to use biometrics but you want to respect the user's privacy, you want to use the information for biometric or adaptive or, adaptive or contextual authentication, but you don't want to store the users, for instance, location information mm -hmm. on a centralized database, that's where we can help. Okay. And uh, I know that you emphasize that your team designs with user privacy in mind. How do you guys go about this exactly? So from the first day, we thought about three pillars for our solutions, mm -hmm. uh, security, privacy, and convenience. And we thought that if, if we want our solution to go widespread, we need to respect the user's privacy, and we obviously need to have a convenient solution um, that everyone can basically take advantage mm -hmm. of. And when it comes to the privacy, 
the solution that we have works with biometric information, works with behavioral information of the user. Very sensitive information that are unique to the users, and often you can change it. For instance, if your uh, biometrics are compromised, mm -hmm. you can change it like password. True, so it's yeah. important to respect the user's privacy. It's important to make it secure. And as I mentioned, we prevent putting all those information on a centralized database. We don't access those to those biometrics and uh, behavioral information. And also the companies that are using no password solution, they're not gonna have access to your sensitive information. We are here to empower the end users wow. to be in charge of their private information mm -hmm. and securely leverage that. And we secure those information on the user's device. And obviously we monitor the security of that device. And if at any point you feel like, like you're, not conf uh, you're not confident or you're not comfortable to mm -hmm. allow company A to use that information, uh, it's all under your control on your device. You can delete those information or you can delete the no password app or that company's app and no one would have access to those sensitive information. Wow, I love that. I love the idea of giving the power back to the end user because I feel like lately it's all in the power of the company and they have everything and they could lose everything just like that. That's amazing, okay. And the uh, last question is, what does the company roadmap look like for 2018? Uh, we are going to announce uh, interesting products. We are going to announce new products in terms of the behavioral and how uh, easy we're going to make the authentication process and how we can in some cases trust the users based on their behavioral okay. and based on adaptive and contextual features not to requiring additional authentication mm -hmm. or in some cases based on the user's behavior we might need to uh, do a stronger authentication mm -hmm. so convenience factor it's going to be uh, more upfront. Uh, next year, obviously, we are building a new security features in the solution as well. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to bring this no password solution to your workstation, to your laptops, and also to your browsers, mm -hmm. and not just rely on the phone for everywhere. And so you'll have the no password on all of your devices enabled. Very nice. This was very cool, very eye-opening. Thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with me about this. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. That was a pleasure. Thank you. And that's all the time that we have for today. So be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.